appreciate the Lord. Appreciate the Lord. Give him the glory and the honor. Give him the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Masham Telabu Karima Talima. Belabukusham Dalana Bakoria. Lika na Madonia Makote de Bekoria. Ale Antonika na Masham Dalana Makoria. Le Prote de Bekoria Maparana Basham Dalana. Lila Mushan Dalana Bakoria Maparana Masham Dalana. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Thank you, our Father, in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a good amen. amen. Could we give Jesus a clap of praise? Let's appreciate the Lord. Come on, let's appreciate the Lord. Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, praise team. Wonderful work. Glory to God. Can we just occupy our chairs like we traditionally do? The seats ahead of us. Quickly, let's move ahead and then occupy our chairs as we get into the word. Amen. We may have our seats in God's presence. So are we blessed to be in the presence of God? If you're excited, shout a good amen. amen. Glory to God in the highest. Uh, we want to continue. We are looking at the spirit of counsel. That is what we are actually looking at, the spirit of counsel. Uh, we are building on this and believing God that God is going to be able to help us uh, to go deeper in his word. Isaiah chapter uh, number 11 again. Isaiah 11 uh, verse number uh, 1 and 2. Isaiah 11 verse number 1 and verse number 2. And there shall come forth a road out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Somebody shout a good amen. amen. All right, now, uh, when I began to speak on the spirit of counsel, I've been picking up more so the, uh, the scripture from the book of Isaiah chapter number 11, and there's a particular reason why I've been revolving around here. Now, there's something I will first of all make as a statement. Then from there, we will find a way to continue. The first statement I want us to understand is that Jesus did not possess the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus never possessed the gifts of the Spirit. Though we might go ahead and uh, begin to declare that he did have them, there is a way we can be able to elaborate that. One of the theological ways and by revelation we can explain that is when Jesus was baptized, when he came out of the water in Matthew chapter number 3, the Bible explains that a dove lightened on him. Now, a dove by revelation has nine feathers on uh, the left wing and nine feathers on the right wing that is at the end. The tail wing of the dove, there are five feathers. So when we look at it by revelation, we'll go ahead and say that Jesus had the five gifts of uh, what we consider as the five offices. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. The five wings at the tail uh, wing of a dove is symbolic of that. The left wing of a dove has nine feathers at the end, which is symbolic of the fruit of the spirit because they are nine in number. Uh, but when we talk about the nine uh, wings or the nine feathers on the right wing of a dove, we are talking about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that's in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 12 from verse number 8 to verse number 10. Uh, we can go there. Let's just check it out. We see the nine gifts of the Spirit uh, that Paul uh, was able to explain. He says, for unto one uh, is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge uh, by the same Spirit. Let's continue. Uh, to another a faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and we continue. And to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another dis uh, uh, what we call diverse uh, kinds of tongues, and to another what we consider as interpretation of tongues. There are nine gifts of the Spirit they are in uh, three categories. There's what we call power gifts. Uh, there's what we call revelational gifts. And there's also what we call speech gifts. There are three of them. And those are the three categories that we actually have power gifts, revelational gifts. And uh, at the same time, the third category is what we call speech gifts. Now, when we look at it, somebody like Paul was able to teach about it because Paul had the privilege of operating with the nine of them arms of a church setting. Uh, but they were given to a believer to function in all dimension. In terms of ministry, wherever you are, God permits you to exercise them. For example, people that do business need the gift of faith. 
You cannot do business without the gift of faith. You also need the gift of word of wisdom if you're operating in business because you're supposed to make major decisions. And every time the gift of word of wisdom comes upon you, you are precise and accurate in your choices. Uh, gifts like prophecy, you require them also in the business world. Even in the corporate world, people that operate with the gift of prophecy have an ability to see things that very few people can. There's a doctor, I've uh, given the story, but I will repeat it again, who had actually been performing a surgery, a major doctor, but he was born again. With all the machines they had, they were trying to locate where the problem was. They were not able to see it. Uh, but this doctor was born again, so he went before God in prayer. And as he knelt down one night, God at night gave him a dream. In the dream, God showed him exactly where the problem was. Now remember, with all the machines they had in America, none of them was able to reveal it. But God revealed where exactly the problem was. He woke up, called all the rest of the other doctors, told them we are going back to the theater. This is where the problem is. They all critiqued him. They told him it cannot be so. You know very well that there's nothing like that. But when he actually went ahead and insisted, when they checked to see where the problem was, it was exactly where he showed them. Why? Because God led him. People like uh, the writer of the book of Think Big, you know, uh, what's his name? Dr. Watt. Ben Carson. If you follow his story, there has actually been a biography movie shown concerning him. Uh, one of the th ways that God spoke to him was through dreams. To go ahead and operate on the, what do we call them? See? Shikarama twins. Amen. Let's just give them that time. Amen. That tongue is a very hard one. Okay. Uh, that type twins who are actually have their heads joined together. For him to perform the operation, if you follow through his life, one of the ways was that God actually spoke to him. At one time while he was in university, they give the story and they say that while the guy was sleeping just before exams, God gave him a leakage of exactly what will be happening. God showed him the exams. God showed him what to study and God led him on how to go ahead and handle it. Now what I'm trying to bring about is that God is interested when he gives us a gift of the spirit not just to operate with it in a church context are you guys understanding me being impressed by a pastor because he gives you word of knowledge is actually childishness these gifts must be very ordinary that in a church setting each one of you can begin to prophesy the bible says for example concerning samuel that samuel was in charge of prophets and he says he would lead, lead them as they all prophesied so one of the proofs of maturity is that the gifts that are active on an altar must be active by grace on the life of all the saints. Are you hearing me? So if there is a strong teaching gift in this, uh, this ministry, the teaching grace must also come on you. If there is a strong apostolic ministry here, the grace of the apostolic must be active in your life. Am I making sense here? So if there's a strong prophetic gift, one of the gifts to give you people is a prophetic gift. Each one of you people must begin to see things. That's how we actually prove that we are doing impartation to the believers. Alright? But what I wanted to point out is that Jesus never really had them. They were there, but he never really operated with them. How do we know it? Now back to Isaiah chapter number 11. Okay? Isaiah 11. The, the things that Jesus operated by was Isaiah 11. Jesus operated with seven spirit, not nine gifts. I hope I'm making sense. Okay? He operated with seven spirits and not nine gifts of the spirit. Because gifts can be dried or taken away. But when we are talking of spirits, that's in an inner working of an individual. So in Christ was a spirit of the Lord. In Christ was a spirit of uh, knowledge and wisdom. Uh, or uh, wisdom and understanding. The spirit of uh, counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. But when Christ died and resurrected uh, and the Holy Ghost was made available to us, we now began to operate with the gifts of the spirit. If you hear me say, I hear you. So which means the, the seven spirits of God which existed in Christ were actually translated into gifts. So when we look, for example, at the spirit of counsel, there were two gifts under the spirit of counsel. All right? Three of them, brother. The first one was what we consider as a spirit or the gift of prophecy, which I will be touching in a short while. So the gift of prophecy is under the spirit of counsel. Are you guys getting me? The second one under the spirit of counsel is what we consider as word of wisdom. Word of wisdom is actually the spirit of counsel. It was actually Christ having it, but the two of them were active even as relates to the context of the gifts of the spirit. Now having said that, I want to break it down and I want to go deeper in explaining what the spirit of counsel is. Uh, today I'm not really feeling my microphone. If you could try and adjust, give me a bit of power in it. I've been doing too much fasting. I need, there's just something, there's just something that mic is not yet there, all right? There are four aspects of the spirit of counsel. Number one, 
The first aspect of the spirit of counsel is that it is revealed as light. It is revealed as light. The spirit of counsel comes as light. Psalms chapter 36 and verses number 9 elaborates it far much more better. Psalms 36 and verse number 9. The Bible says, David speaking, that thou art the fountain of life and in thy light, in thy light shall we see light. Now, you realize that David, or David here while speaking, Psalms 36 and verse 9, David while speaking uh, explains to us at the moment we come into contact with God, what begins to happen to us, we begin to have light active on the inside of us. Now, in Daniel chapter number 5, let's go to Daniel 5 and verse 11, the wife of Belteshazzar, I gave you this scripture yesterday, explains the same thing. The wife of Belteshazzar says concerning Daniel, Daniel 5 and verse 11, that in him was the spirits of the Holy God. Then he, she explains and says number one was light number two understanding and number three wisdom the word light there is a spirit of counsel so why does a spirit of counsel emerge as light quickly write this down because light gives you number one clarity light gives you clarity so anytime the spirit of counsel is active in you you will notice that you have clarity as relates to your decisions there is no sense of confusion. You are clear about the decisions you're making, clear about where you're going, clear about the destination you're actually taking. In Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 1, the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. In verse number 2, verse number 2 of Genesis chapter 1, he says, and the earth was formless and void and darkness, take note of that, darkness was upon the face of the earth. The word darkness there is confusion. Things that bring conflict or confusion. So when God begins to bring to you light, light is an aspect of counsel. It means that God begins to give you counsel so you have an ability to have clarity in anything you're doing. Number two, the word light there symbolizes precision and accuracy. Precision and accuracy. So the moment somebody has a spirit of counsel active in them as light, it makes them precise and accurate, which means that they can hit the target. They can hit the target. Anything they are pursuing, they never go wrong. In Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15, look at this scripture. Okay? Proverbs 13 and verse 15. In King James, it says, A way of a transgressor, part B of the scripture. It says, But the way of a transgressor is hard. The word transgressor there means a person that is off course. A person that is not in the path of accuracy. Part of the reason why sometimes we go through cycles of difficulty, hardness in our life, and we go through seasons of defeat is not just because of demonic attack. One of the things that we have to understand, part of the reason why many times we have delay, we have a hardness, is because there is no light in our walk. When a hardness appears, it means there must be transgression. Transgression means that you have moved out of your ordained path. So your life is an introduction of warfare. Did you hear what I just said? So we look at Proverbs chapter 14 and chapter 4, verse 18 and verse 19. So let's look at verse number 18, first of all. So when the spirit of counsel is on you, your path should never be hard. I've been praying through this because something that God actually revealed to me. Look at what it says. But the path of the just is like what? A shining light. Somebody say a shining light. Shout it louder. Say again, a shining light. He says, the path of the just is like a shining light. Then look at the way it continues. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So that means that when you locate the path of light, which is the path of the just, the moment counsel comes on you, your days are ever improving. Your life is never the same. Your life keeps on becoming better. Your yesterday or your today is an upgrade of your yesterday. So the Bible says that the path of the just is likened to a shining light. And his paths grow brighter and brighter and brighter. Now please remember where we came from. We came from the part where is a transgression. Is transgression. And in the path of a transgressor, there is difficulty and struggles. But the moment somebody comes into light, his pathway has constant progress. May God bring you to that reality. I said again, may God bring you to that reality. Verse number 18, then we come, verse 19, then we come back to verse 18. Please remember, so that means where the spirit of counsel is, your life is easened. Your life is quickened into success. You stumble on blessings every day. Favor becomes your reality. 
Oh, I thought, okay, the amen is only a few. Are you hearing me? Every day is an improvement of where you had actually been. Look at verse 19. He says, a way of the wicked. So we are going back to that way of a transgressor. The way of a wicked is as darkness. Look at what he says. They know not what they stumble upon. I've added the word upon there. So they are ever stumbling on issues. One thing after the other. They are stumbling on issues. One after the other. One mistake, another one. Battles here, battles on the other side. But the moment we go back to verse 18, when we get into the pathway of the just, light is available light is availed so god begins to give you counsel that makes you precise god makes you accurate you don't miss the mark may god give you precision this year you will not make bad decisions you will make accurate decisions god will show you the way to go god will lead you in the path to go you need to give me a better amen right here so that's one thing that you have to understand kenneth copeland he is one of the richest preachers that we have in the world today. Apart from covenants he has made with God, one of the ways that God led him into riches is that God led him to purchase some property somewhere. The property that he ended up purchasing in Texas, as the Lord led him, in that particular place, it was an abandoned place. People are not purchasing anything there. But the Holy Ghost impressed him to buy as much property as he could in the same area. So they ended up purchasing properties as they got the properties from there because many of the people that were there had abandoned it. Few months after they discovered oil in the same area. So Copeland today is a supplier of oil and gas. That is part of the way that he has become a rich fellow. A preacher but an owner of oil fields. There is another one of his sons. One of his sons is called Jerry, Jesse Duplantis. No, not Jesse Duplantis. Jerry Savelle. Jerry Savelle the other day was giving his own story. He said one day, one of the friends of his, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, legal officer, his lawyer, began to advise him and he would tell him, there is some property somewhere and they are actually selling it right now. Why don't you go ahead and purchase it? He said, uh, he told the lawyer please make an inquiry, confirm how the property is. When they checked it, the properties were not prime, they were not good. People were rejected it the guy says that he had a leading after he prayed that god insisted he needed to buy it as he went out and he bought it he bought the property over 100 acres at less amount of money not long after they discovered gas in the same area bishop td jacks himself gives his story he said he was driving together with a wife in a neighborhood to buy a house as they were driving there, he said the Holy Ghost insisted they buy it in a specific place. In the place where they were going to purchase the house, as the Lord led them there, he felt a leading that was very strong. They bought the property. Three months after, gas was discovered in the same area. You know, Texas is oil rich and gas rich. Are you guys understanding me? So he says he thought he was buying a house. He never knew God was leading him to wealth. The Bible says he will order your steps. May God order your steps. The Bible says your feet will be dipped in oil. God will lead you there. So light gives you precision. I want you to put your hands on your eyes. I want us to make a prayer. Put your hands on your eyes. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare over my life. Every cloud of darkness. Is removed right now. Say so there will be no confusion. Pray it with zeal. No confusion. In my life. The Lord will grant me clarity. The Lord will grant me clarity. In this season, light is availed to me. As it was to Daniel, so is it given to me. I will be clear. I will be accurate. I will be precise. My steps, shout it louder, my steps will grow from brighter to brighter. If you believe it, can you shout a good amen? It's very possible for God to guide you throughout the entire year through the spirit of counsel. Number two, the spirit of counsel comes as an instructor. The spirit of counsel comes as an instructor. So number one, he comes as a light. Number two, he comes as an instructor. Genesis chapter number 42 and chapter 4 and verse number 22. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 22. Now I'm teaching and I'm hoping you are receiving something. In Genesis chapter number 4 and verse number 22, we see a group of people that were born from a particular tribe. Look at what it says. And Zillah, she also bear to Baal Cain. To Baal Cain. Then it says an instructor of, the, of every artifact in brass and iron and a sister of Tubal uh, was na, 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 Nama. Now watch what he says. He says she was an instructor. Somebody say an instructor. Shout it louder. Say again an instructor. Those of you that read the book of Genesis you will discover that the first created people never came from the bloodline of Abel. They came from the bloodline of Cain. 
Cain committed sin against God by killing his brother. But even though he was rejected, he still asked God not to be far from him. The fact that the presence of God was still with the Cain family made that family possess two advantages. Number one, the Cain family was the only family to begin building cities. Number two, the Cain family was the first family to begin to have the power to have creativity of what we call merchandise creation. The Bible says they were actually instructors of artifacts of brass over iron. That means that these guys built with the iron. They knew how to discover minerals. Now please understand Abel had a bloodline but we don't see anything much. It was until Seth had appeared. Now what I'm trying to explain, Cain with the little God he had still had an advantage. He never had much God but he had creativity. You have enough God as a believer and the advantage of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. With the Holy Ghost in you, you have the ability to be instructed in success. So let's keep on looking at scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 36. Deuteronomy chapter number 4 and verse number 36. Please remember this, instruction is what leads to two things. It leads to promotion and success. Everyone that ever succeeds in life succeeds because they followed instruction. And everyone that was ever promoted in life was promoted because they followed instruction. Not because they prayed. Not because they were ag aggravated or they fought through. Everything that you enjoy as a promotion comes by an instruction. Everything you enjoy in the name of success comes by an instruction. So look at this. He says, out of the heaven he made thee to hear his voice that he might instruct thee. Somebody say instruct. Shout it loudly. Say again instruct. He says that he might instruct thee and upon the earth he showed you his great fire and thou heardest his words and out of the midst of the fire. Now the point is here, God instructed them and this comes through the spirit of counsel. Now I'm just praying for people to hear me. Did you ever know that whenever God wants to lead you out of crisis, he gives you instructions. Go wash your eyes, Jesus would say. Rise up and pick your mat, Jesus would say. He wouldn't come and do drama. He would only give an instruction and the miracle would follow immediately after. Come on, I wish. Are you guys getting me? The moment he gave an instruction, a miracle occurred. He would simply go ahead, put mud on the eyes. He would say, go, do this. He would find the lepers and tell them, go and show yourself. And as they went, they got healed. Everything you ever need in form of your breakthrough is hidden in instruction. All right. The same Deuteronomy. I'm still going deeper. 32 and verse number 10. And that's why I'm praying today. Many of you have been hearing a voice telling you do this. The problem is you're waiting for a breakthrough and yet God has been telling you what to do to have a breakthrough. You have been asking God, change my financial life. And there is a voice telling you fast for three days. Change my financial life. A voice has been telling you I need a sacrifice from you. Change this. And every day God keeps on giving you an instruction. You are waiting for a breakthrough. And there is always a breakthrough through instructions. The widow that came to see Elisha and told Elisha, you know very well that my servant served you. And you know very well he was faithful. What do I do? There was a simple instruction. Woman, what do you have? The woman spoke of a small jar of oil. Instructions were given. This is what you will do. Borrow as many pots as you can. Lock yourself in the house and pour it. The woman had a right to complain, but she opted to follow instruction. What has God been speaking to you that you have not been doing? Your victory is only a step away. So better put, it's only an instruction away. If you hear me say, I hear you. Look at that scripture. It says, he found him in the desert. <laughs> and the Bible says, in the west, howling wilderness. He led him about. What did he do? He did what? Shout it aloud. What did he do? He did what? Look at that. God instructed him. God found him in the wilderness. God found him in a western place. Some of you may be in a wilderness right now. The way to break the wilderness is by instructions. Oh, I need an amen right here. There will always be a word telling you, do this. There will be a leading. Every time you pray and you keep on saying, Lord, speak to me, he does. There are impressions you will feel. Go ahead and support so-and-so. Go ahead and take care of so-and-so. Some time back, I was actually believing God for something. I remember I just took a flight and I landed like this. When I landed, I was supposed to have given a particular couple one of the devotional so that they would go and drop it where they were going to. But the moment I landed like this, as I was going to meet them, the Holy Ghost told me, you will go and shop for them and you will shop for their children. I said, Lord, I don't understand. So immediately the moment I was picked, I drove all the way, called them. I asked them that we go all the way to this, uh, this supermarket here on Uganda Road. What do we call it? 
uh, no transmat, quick mat. So we went there and I asked them, pick whatever you want. And so they had to go ahead and pick. I didn't know that God had actually spoken to the lady. So that moment after we did everything, the lady now looks at me. It was actually Pastor Jeremiah and his wife Tabitha and their sons. And so Pastor Jeremiah tells me, Pastor, you can't believe it. But let me tell you, Tabitha had a dream this morning. And Tabitha saw somebody doing shopping for us. And the person came and did everything. So when I obeyed God, I was believing God for something. I did not know they too were believing God for something. Do you know whenever God wants to meet your need, God will connect two people who I need. When God had a need, God wanted somebody who also had a need. Hannah had been praying all throughout her years. Every year she had been asking God for breakthrough. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Every year she had been complaining, Penina is harassing me. But one day when she changed that prayer and said, Lord, if you give me a male child, I vow to give to you. God says, your answer has been delivered. Because I have a need. My need was I was looking for a prophet. You, you had a need. You wanted a breakthrough for children. <laughs> Are you guys hearing me? So God knew Pancras had a need. I was trusting God for something. And guess what? When I obeyed God, God began to do the miracle on my behalf. I was believing God for something. And I remember I landed. That money, I went ahead. I asked them, shop whatever you want. They picked up everything. I did every shopping. Gave them money. Go to the market. Pick whatever you want. Then release them to go to Kisumu. That time when, the husband, when, when Pastor Jeremiah told me that the wife had that dream. And I was able to be the one to be used. I knew God. God will answer my prayer. For when there was a prophet who needed food, God sent the prophet to a widow who was about to take her last meal. When the two of them connected, the two of them lasted for three and a half years. Some of you, God has been telling you do some things and you're rejecting. You're saying God bless me and God says begin by blessing somebody. You, you're only thinking of yourself. You're saying God answer me, I need a miracle. There are things God has been telling you. You didn't need to hear a voice. Every morning you woke up, you had felt you needed to do something. Do those things, those instructions will break your wilderness. I said they will break your wilderness. Never cut off from the leadings of the spirit. God's counsel comes by instructions. And instructions are the way you move to your next Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 13. And then we will go to Job. Are you guys getting something here? Now notice I'm not really preaching. I'm taking you through a session. And I'm praying that you will be open. Look at Proverbs. Look at what it says. Take fast hold. 4 verse 13. Take fast hold all the instructions. Somebody say instructions. Shout it loudly. Say again instructions. He says take fast hold of instruction. Why? Let her not go. Why? Keep her. For she is thy life. Instruction is your life. It's a progress you require. Job 36 verse number 10. Give us new King James. Give us new King James. Job 36 verse 10 and verse number 11. Listen to me. The voice of counsel comes by instructions. Those impressions that you keep on having, Marlene, those ones are God speaking to you. Follow them. There are things God will tell you to do. Do them. Please give me an amen. He says, whatever the master tells you to do, do. Don't hold back. So look at what he says. He also opens their ear. Are you guys reading the same scripture with me? To what? Shout it loudly. To what? And then what does he do? He commands that they turn from their iniquity. Then look at the next verse. So he opens their ear to instructions commanding. If they obey. If they. What are they obeying? Instructions. If they obey and serve him. The Bible says they will speak. And they are days in prosperity. Me, I want that. Yes, I'm receiving it in Jesus' name. I have no problem with breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. But I want to hear a voice. I've been asking God, give us graceful lives. Not lives of warfare. All right? Not lives of warfare. That every day is just walk, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. I cannot keep, keep, keep on killing my grand, grandmother's devil. I refuse. There are levels where God just leads you and your life is with ease. People keep on looking at you. You tell them it is real. This one is a flawed, it's a flowered life. Why? Grace follows after you. Not because you labor hard, but because instructions are available. Every day you keep on obeying God, you spend your days. May you receive that. Or oh, your amen looks like it needs help. I said, may you receive it. I, I want you to lift your hands and repeat after me. Say, my heart is open. To receive instructions. I will hear whenever he speaks. And I will be led to my place of success. Number three. Whenever we deal with the spirit of counsel. He comes as a teacher. Not only does he give instruction. He comes as a teacher. As I'm teaching you right now. I'm praying that God is already opening up you. And something is shifting in your life. Listen. 
We had a meeting of PMI yesterday and I gave you the testimony of one of the people we have in PMI last week and I told you how I told him in one word. I said in 24 hours, God will answer your prayer. The next day God answered. So yesterday we were doing the meeting. Now, I have to also tell you, this guy has been our chairman. As per last year, there's a time he was planning to actually leave Agi. He was slowly wanting to leave because he felt, as a chairman, I cannot be able to lead people. And yet I'm dealing with finance and trying to tell people to partner and I don't have anything to give. I don't know whether you have ever been there. I held on to him. We had a meeting early this year. I took a flight to Nairobi. I was going from, it was late last year, going for a mission to Tala. So they picked me from the airport and I sat down with them. I told him, Job, you cannot leave. You will remain the chairman. I told him before I took any of you, I had already prayed. So I never took you because of your financial capacity. Is because I knew you are my sons. And you are one of my first sons. I began to remind him. I told him, do you remember I gave you a certain cloth? He said, yes. He was in campus here doing medicine. I told him that cloth was actually my, my wedding garment. I, you know, I put on a Nigerian garment. And I told him that one was my wedding garment from Nigeria, not the ones for Kenya. You understand me? So I explained to him everything. I told you I was passing a mantle to you. So when I told him that the guy now began to speak, he shared with me his issues. I told him I'm sticking to you. So last week when God gave him a breakthrough, the boy shouted back. Now this is what happened yesterday when we were having the meeting. While we were doing the meeting conversing, we are actually agreeing. We need to do a physical meeting. I tell them, well, the only way I can make it to come to Nairobi because we'll be having a teens meeting is that I have to be back here. I probably take a flight early in the morning and organize to take the afternoon flight and come back to Eldoret. So when I said that, Job said, Pastor, please don't disturb yourself. Count it down. I've already paid your way to come. <laughs> I mean, I noticed the guy was excited to give. And I realized, Kai... It's good when God answers prayer. Are you understanding me? Can you imagine right now I prophesy and one of you guys gets two million. I know you will come tomorrow and tell me how much was a hole. You will clear it right here. Now when you don't say amen, you look like you only want to receive 20,000. Let me hear an amen right here. I notice how excited the guy was. Why am I giving you this testimony? Listen to me. God has people he has ordained to be teachers to you. And there are things they carry on your behalf. So look at Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 20 and verse 21. And I will prophesy today because the spirit of counsel is a teacher and a teacher God gives them the right to release words that will shift your destiny. Are you getting something? Isaiah 30 verse 20 and verse number 21. Now I'm just teaching but I know God is shifting lives. Yeah, because you will be one of them. He says, though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and though he has given you the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be removed in, into a corner. But he says, but your eyes, your eyes will see your teachers. So look at the next verse after that. He says, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is a way. So your eyes will have the ability to see and your ear will have the capacity to see. Why? Because God knows he gave you affliction and adversity. He will release teachers to bring you out of it. There will always be people God will send. They will carry a word that will shift you to your next level. Listen, for Peter at night while he was actually laboring throughout, God had already orchestrated a net-breaking miracle for him the next day. So the moment Jesus appeared, the Bible records, he requested for Peter to give him the boat. When Jesus went into the boat and began to teach, after he finished teaching, he turned to Peter and he told him, cast your nets into the water. Now listen to what the scripture says. He says, Peter looked at him. He said, Master, I have toiled the whole night. In other words, I've been trying what you are telling me. This thing is not working, but he told him, cast it. Peter said, nevertheless, at your word, in obedience to the teacher, he received a net-breaking miracle. I pray for somebody here that the word of God will come to you so strong. The area you have been struggling, may God release a word that will literally break the struggle. I know that there is no amen, but I'm coming right here. I pray that there will be a word. What you need is a word. A word that will teach you how to move to success. A word that will teach you how to break affliction in your life. A word that will shift your destiny. A word that will open your doors. May there be a word that you will hear telling you this is a way. May there be a word. May the spirit of counsel come like a teacher to you every day. May God give you a word every day that will guide you to your next level. Every day you wake up in the morning when you read the Bible, let a word 
When we read the Bible, we read it in Logos, but we can get it in Rema. Let the teacher teach you. Read and may God give you a word. Yesterday I read a scripture and I stood up. I shouted. I said, Lord, I will not receive that. The Bible talks of a king and how the king went ahead to commit sin. That is Rehoboam. When he committed sin against God, the Bible says God in anger sent the armies of Ethiopia to go ahead and judge them. Actually, the armies of Egypt. As Egypt appears, he says, the man Rehoboam with the elders of Israel and the nation of Israel knelt before God and fasted and prayed. And the same prophet was sent back. He was told, go and tell them that I have seen your humility. And because of that, I will not, I will not judge you. But I will give you, the Bible says, some deliverance. I read that scripture. I said, Lord, I don't understand. Then he continued. He said, because your heart is not perfect. I said, oh my God. So that means there are people who receive some deliverance. Temporal deliverance. I told God I refuse anything called some. I choose permanent, full deliverance. If you will bring a breakthrough, let it not be partial. Let it not be a miracle that looks like it is coming and it never comes. Let it not be a breakthrough that looks like it is coming and it never arrives. Let it be a miracle that will appear and it comes permanently. I said to myself, Lord, I have seen some, but I reject some. I want it to be permanent. You need a word, just one word. Every day, may God give you a word. May the teacher teach you when you are sleeping. May the teacher teach you when you wake up. May the teacher teach you when you do not know what to do. May there be a word that will lead you out of that quagmire. May there be a word that will guide you out of that challenge. May there be a word that will give you the wisdom to make the right decision. Just one word and you are out of your chaos. There is a teacher. Number four, and I close. The spirit of counsel comes as a spirit of prophecy. Now I will measure on this tomorrow. Then we will do practicals. Is that okay? We will get into prophecy. If I had an amen, it will be better. He comes as a spirit of prophecy. So I said yesterday, his work is to show you the future. His work is to equip you for where you are. His work is to teach you how to defend yourself from past battles. Because he comes as a prophet. I said again, he comes as a prophet. So when you see the spirit of counsel, it is prophecy being displayed. Prophecy being displayed. Joel 2 and verse 28 and we close. He says, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what will my sons and daughters do? They shall prophesy. Now listen, if we are talking of spirits and we are saying we are talking of the spirit of counsel. Thank you, Jen. We are talking of the spirit of counsel. Then watch this very carefully. It means if you ever want to know that that spirit is active in you, there are three things you will see in you. One, you will notice you dream a lot. Number two, you will notice visions begin to become clear. And number three, it's easy to see prophetically. Did you hear what I just said? There's no way the Holy Ghost will move and you don't have dreams. It is a lie. I said it is a lie. Try to fast and pray and you fasted correctly. You must have a dream. Try to go ahead and see God properly. You must have prophecy working around you. So the proof that there is an activeness of a spirit in you is that these three things will appear. Now tomorrow I want to deal with prophecy. Then we will do practicals the last time, 10 minutes. Are we together? I would want us to unlock the heavens and we prophesy here. If I had an amen, it would be better. I want us to enjoy that. Let's rise up on our feet because of time. For one minute, I just want you to pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Lift your hands. Say, Heavenly Father. I ask you in the name of Jesus to teach me. Let there be a word every day through the spirit of counsel. Instruct me and give me the heart of obedience. Let light be given to me that this year my life will not be difficult. Say, I declare over myself. Come on, lift up your hands. In the name of Jesus, the heavens over me are open. The spirit of counsel is given to me. In 2022, there is light. There is instruction. There is a word. And there is prophecy. My paths will grow from brighter to brighter. In the name of Jesus. Please just open your mouth for 30 seconds and say, Lord, I receive. 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 Just open your mouth and say, Lord, I receive. I receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name. Lord, let it be that even with this simple teaching as I've been laying it down, 
The master, your people will begin to find clarity of several things. May your voice not fail in their lives. I pray for the sense of discernment of the voice of God to increase in people. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. Give them the ability to hear. I break anything that clouds the ability to hear. Anything that blindens the ability to see. I remove it now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. I declare over you, you will hear that voice. I said you will hear that voice. I said you will hear that voice. I said you will hear that voice. I declare that your dreams will be clear. I declare your visions will be clear. I declare prophecy will be clear. I declare instructions will be clear. I declare the teaching spirit will be given to you. In the name of Jesus. Every day you will open the Bible. May the spirit of revelation be given to you. May God speak every day. May God guide you every day. And I pray for a spirit of obedience. In the name of Jesus. There are two people here. Some few days ago, God led you to do something. One of you, you have been rebelling against it because you feel you have once done it. And the Holy Ghost is saying, I know what I'm leading you to. So God is saying, obey. The second one, you have begun it by you're doing it partially. Whatever it is that the Holy Ghost is demanding of you, listen, the Lord says, do it. Do not hold back. Do it. Do not hold back. I release the ability to obey his voice. Receive this today. In Jesus name, can we give the Lord a clap offering of praise right here? Amen and amen. Are you blessed? Tomorrow we are going to have practical 10 minutes immediately after the word. We will trust God to lead us. Get your offering. I want us to give so that we can be able to honor God with our seats. If you're using m -Pesa, the teal number is actually there. And we are going to bless the Lord together in Jesus name. Get your offering very quickly. I'm waiting for you. Those of you that are watching, the details are actually streaming below the screen. You could also participate. Lift up your offering and let's give with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Even if you don't have an offering, lift up your hands. I speak a blessing to you and to all that concerns you. In your hands, there will be resources. More than enough. And if I be a prophet and a man of God, I declare you will never lack money. Money will begin to locate you. I said money will begin to locate you. From wherever it is, in the name of Jesus, it locates you now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There is a basket on the left and on the right. Drop your offering. Let's see you tomorrow. God bless you. Please bring a friend. We will go deeper in Jesus' name.